there are many, many, many uses for various types of viewports in Vectorworks. This is the most simple kind. We're going to create what's called a plan or a top plan viewport, a simple, simple as you can viewport. We're on design layer here. Uh, just a little hint, you can tell we're on design layer A because I've named my design layer ground floor, and B because this portion of this icon is dark. If I were to switch over to a sheet layer, once I'm on a sheet layer, that icon darkens. And it, if you were to click this, it just says layers, but this will give you a quick indicator of whether you're on a design or a sheet layer. Just a quick note. Go back to ground floor. What we'll do is with nothing selected, we'll go to view, create viewport. Now, if we say create on a layer and we choose a sheet layer, it'll make a sheet layer viewport. If we chose a design layer, it would make a design layer viewport. Simple enough. We'll cover design layer viewports elsewhere. For now, we'll just do a new sheet layer. The default name is fine. And you can see a few things will be correct. We're in top plan view. So the rendering will by default be wireframe, which is just plan rendering, and the projection will be 2D plan. If you had done this in 3D, these would be different. Like this might say uh, custom, this might say OpenGL, and this might say perspective, but this is what you want for a top plan viewport. And we'll leave all the rest of this default for now. Click OK. And we'll be taken over to a sheet layer that has the viewport on it. So you can see this is not a individual items now. See if I go back to the design layer. If I go back to the design layer and I hover over it, you'll see the individual items are selectable and highlighted when I go over them. So it'll, basically the objects are individual here. If I go now over to the sheet layer, this viewport is one object. So when I hover over it, it'll highlight for snapping, but I can only click on one thing and it will say viewport. And I'll have my little annotations down here for the drawing title. Now, something you need to remember when you created this viewport and viewports can do a number of different things, but one of the main things they do, and one of the most important things they do, is that they can have separate class and layer settings from the rest of your document. They don't affect the class and layer visibilities of your document. But what they do do is they take on, upon creation, what the class and layer visibility settings are. So to give you an example of that, we'll go back to our ground floor layer, and we'll add a brand new object, make something very big and obvious like a circle, that's lovely. And we'll give it a new class. So a completely new class that didn't exist. Obviously, new class. There we are. Whoops. And we're using class attributes, so we'll just set that back to solid. So we'll use that fill. So this is in the obviously new class. If we go over here and go back to our sheet layer, we'll see that this does not appear. We get the snapping of it because it's invisible. Let's see, there it is. We'll get the snapping for it because it's invisible and it is contained within the document, but it's not present in this viewport. If we want to see it, we can actually just move this over. I'll simply duplicate this viewport over to the side, and I'll click the Classes button. If I scroll down here to my O's, I want my obviously new class. There we are. You can see it's turned off, so it is not currently active. Turn that on and click OK. And you can see in this viewport, I can now see this circle entirely. That doesn't change, and so even though I have this viewport, if I update this, it will not show that new object that I made. If I go back to my ground floor plan, this is still here. Now, if I were to select this object and delete it, and go back to my sheet layer, it will now be gone from both of them. I don't need to update either of them, it'll update them automatically. Now that was visibilities, but what you can also control is the actual attributes of objects separately from their attributes in the design layer. So for this viewport, we'll select this one, click classes, and I will scroll down and I happen to know that this class controls the majority of the slabs in this document. So I'll edit this class and we'll change this so that this is a light blue outlined in red, something nice and obvious there. Click OK. And see this icon? This here indicates that this class has had its changes, has had uh, overrides applied to it for this viewport. It's similar to the viewport icon. If you ever at some point are done with this and you don't want to make those changes anymore, you don't edit this and then undo in here. What you do is you select revert. And I won't do that now because I want to show you what the class has done. But if you ever want to undo these changes, you click revert. Click OK. And you can see all of the objects in that class that were using that class attribute have now done this for this viewport. They haven't been affected in the other viewport, and if I go back to the design layer, they haven't changed there either. 
And that's another one of the main reasons you care about viewports and would want to use them. You can control it and basically show different things. So for instance, you could have one viewport where each different element was highlighted in blue every single time and just subsequently like, here's all the furniture, here are all the slabs. There's a number of different things you can do with this, but that's the basics. That gives you the basic fundamentals of using the viewport that way. Uh, the other basic thing about viewports I want to mention is cropping. So actually we'll delete both of these and we'll go back to our design layer. And what we'll do is, what if we want a viewport of not everything in the document? This document is very limited, but what if we just want this room? What we can do is we can take the rectangle tool, or really any poly polygonal tool, circles are fine. You know what? We'll use circles. We'll be fancy. Use a circle, go around an area, and with this circle selected, it doesn't matter that I can't see through it, with this circle selected, we'll go to View and Create Viewport. And it's going to ask me if I want to use that as the viewport's crop. If I check this and say yes, it will always do that. A lot of people keep it that way. Generally, you don't want to check it if you're going to say no, because then you'll have to go and reset the settings in order to get that again. So generally, leave this alone or go with yes. We'll put it on that same sheet one. And you can see we have a nice circular viewport. It still looks square, however, and that's because we don't have the crop visible. So that's our crop object, which is what that circle was. This is still a viewport, but it's what's called a cropped viewport. If we wanted to edit this later, edit this after the fact, we don't have to go back and make another viewport. We can simply right click on it and choose edit crop. And then we can either expand the area that this covers or relocate it entirely, anything we like. Viewboards can be cropped by any polygon of any kind, any 2D polygon, but it has to be a single polygon. You can't have two circles. Now, if you wanna have a shape that's like two circles, you just have to make sure that they're overlapping. See how this isn't highlighted now and this is all in gray? It's just giving me a preview of what's not going to be in the highlighting. So now, see how this just sort of goes white? It doesn't do the cropping thing. I need these both to be one object. So if I add surface these together, now they became one object. If I exit it, I have a unusually shaped crop. You can normally use rectangles for this. The circles are normally just used for like detail viewports or detail callouts, things like that. But any polygonal object will work just fine. We'll go into more into the um, editing annotations and editing a few other things about viewports later, but that just gives you the gist of it. This is the most simple kind of viewports, planned viewports.